Hello and welcome to yet another video spouting the joys of doll making. This time we will talk about the different techniques, materials and styles to give your doll gorgeous hair. I've been meaning to create this video to accompany an in-depth article on my blog on how to make doll hair. If you want to go and check that one out, it was published quite a few years ago However, I take care to update all sources with working links and add more as I find new information or tutorials to share with you all. I listed in said article all the types of doll hair that either I've personally used or that some of my doll maker friends use on their dolls. So instead of repeating everything written down in that post, in this video I will be discussing my three favorite styles of doll hair. Starting with the all natural and most simple of all, mohair yarn. This is the simplest technique to create dull hair as once you crochet or knit the cap, you're pretty much done. Naturally, this was love at first sight for me, but it wasn't the first dull hairstyle I tried. When I started making dolls back in 2008, 13 years ago now, I was using thick yarns and then I started using added strands of hand spun yarns as well. This created very fun colors and a lot of texture, which was fun to me and fun for my little customers. But little by little, I long for the simplicity of the mohair yarn caps traditionally used on Waldorf inspired dolls. In my humble opinion, this will always be the most suitable doll hair for dolls meant to be played by very young children. It is soft, it comes in so many colors and it adds such an unbeatable wholesome charm to the dolls. It keeps them so rooted in childhood, you see. That's one of the reasons I think I love it so much. Now, there are a few different techniques to create more hair cups using doll making yarn and I have luckily already shown you two in this YouTube channel. You can check out the video for the wig cap made for Hansel and how I added longer strands of yarn to make the braids for Gretel. One of my most favorite dolls of mine, Miss Poet, has nothing but a simple cap of mohair yarn. People have asked me countless of times why I never gave her long tresses with mohair weft or usuri alpaca, and the truth is that those types of hair age the dolls, or at least in my opinion add a realism to the doll that Poet doesn't really need. She's magical, full of innocence in her sweet simple tresses of cute mohair wisps. It is the style of doll hair I included in my little fake doll pattern, as well as the one I love to use when I make baby dolls. I just think it adds a very special quality to the dolls, allowing your imagination to run free and your playful sensibility to blossom. There are several brands that produce high quality mohair yarns used specifically for doll making. If you want to check them out, there are several links to articles placed in the video description box below. Now my second favorite style of doll hair is using commercial mohair wefts. Of course, not just the mohair ones. There are commercial wefts available made with the fiber from goats, but also yak and camel. These are the most common ones. These wefts are available in all sorts of textures, colors, and lengths. Some are quite fine and are prone to tangling, while others are treated and chemically permed, which makes them very suitable for constant handling, styling, washing, curling, and even blow drying. If you have a hairstylist in the family, this type of doll hair is the one that fares the best. I normally attach the commercial weft to a cap made in matching yarn, and usually I use doll making mohair yarn. I like that the fussy whips of mohair help cover the sewn lines of weft around the doll's head. This technique is the one I share with you via my pattern Big Fig, an ebook to make an 18 inch doll using weft for her hair. Of course you could sew it to a bod wick cap made in stretchy fabric or sew it straight to the hair. I normally shy away from those things because I don't personally like the wick caps and I don't enjoy sewing commercial weft straight to the head. The arrays of hairstyles you can achieve with commercial wefts is quite astounding. You will never be bored and the dolls will keep requesting it. I will 
call this hairstyle an intermediate to advanced technique as there are more considerations to take care of versus just making the mohair yarn cut. First, you use two or three techniques to make the hair. You have to use yarn that matches the weft color. You have to ensure the dye from the weft doesn't bleed. And you will have to contend with sewing a tidy final crown on the wig. There's another technique in which you crochet the weft as you build a cap. This is a technique I actually started using when I first encountered commercial wefts. I got away from it for many years due to unruly underhairs and odd looking hairlines, but I've now returned back to it with some good improvements to the technique. Of course, the final and most intense of techniques for making doll hair is using lots of fiber to create your very own wefts. I will definitely call this an advanced way of making doll hair, not only because you're now adding a level of complexity to the doll hair, you're increasing the time spent on making the hair quite severely. Depending on the fiber of choice, this could add anything from five to 15 hours or more. If you buy raw fiber, Raw fiber means it is coming to you straight from the animal and is the most economical option to purchase fiber. Then you're going to need to sort it, wash it, recondition it, brush it, and sew it into webs first. You might even need to dye it as well. So if you really want to try to make your own webs using locks, I recommend you at least give yourself a better fighting chance by purchasing ready-to-use fiber. One that is clean, sorted, brushed, tied in neat little bundles, and in the color you want to use it. It is more expensive to buy it this way, but you can get straight into sewing and then attach it to the doll. I do sew handmade webs straight to the doll's head sometimes, as the process is more enjoyable to me than dealing with the hard sewn root of the commercial webs, but you can equally attach them to the yarn cap, which is also a method I use very often. I've used countless fibers to make doll hair, Surrey alpaca and Appaloosa alpaca in all shades and lengths. I've used all manner of wool fibers, Lester Longwall, Wensleydale, Cotswold, Teeswater, Blueface Lester, Gotland, Ballet Black Nose, Greyface, Greyface Dartmoor, and of course Mohair. I've used them in their natural colors and I've also bought them dyed in fan of bright colors or dyed them myself. So you're ready to learn? Let me tell you some ways I can help you. If you're very interested in all things doll hair, this year I published an entire series on Patreon going from preparing the raw fiber and how to clean it and have it ready to dyeing it different colors and making webs out of it. I also have many hair tutorials from previous years in Patreon which will become available to you as you join the doll making tier. If video learning is not your thing, I also have a PDF ebook that shows you with step-by-step -step photos how to process Surrey alpaca, how to make the webs, and then how to attach them to the doll's head. So no matter your learning style, there's bound to be a way for you to experience and practice how to make the hair for your dolls. I've shared many free tutorials and a step process in the article mentioned at the beginning of this video, so be sure to check that one first. I spent an inordinate amount of time designing my dolls making sure that the hair, the eye color, the skin fabric, and the clothing fabrics I offer them are close to their personality. I know I work rather backwards because I know the soul of the doll first, I know her name and who she is, and only then can I start to design the outside. I know who the doll is and in chats with her or him, I know then which style will be suitable to their character which skin tone complements their life background, and which fabrics might suit their personality and tell more of their story. Then I choose a technique for the job and have jolly fun while doing it. Doll making is an endless source of love, enjoyment, and healing for me, and I hope you two get to practice it on a regular basis. My best wishes to you as you tackle doll hair for your next doll, and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you find it useful.